Alrighty, welcome to another Vintage Cube Draft. We're doing a league today, battling against seven other cube aficionados, and uh, not the best first pick, honestly. It's like Steam Vince versus Caracas. Not, not really what I'd call the dream scenario. I think I'm probably just going to take Caracas. Kind of a busted card. Othari is good too, Wandering Emperor, but I feel like just starting with Caracas is pretty solid. Oh, now I'll just take Flash. Flash is awesome. You should definitely take Flash almost every time you see it early. It just goes so well with, well, not World Spine because they kind of inexplicably cut it from the cube, <laughs> but really good with uh, Atroxa. You know, it's pretty good with Triplicate Titan, Itali, so it's got some good combos. Passing up on a Wooded Foothills, Teferi, and Vamp, I suppose, but Flash is decent. All right, so Emrakul does not work with Flash is one thing to note. They can go in the same deck because they both are good with sneak attack and, you know, like Shallow Grave type stuff. Though, of course, Emrakul doesn't work with traditional reanimates as well. There's also Narset, which is solid at finding Flash and could be good in draw seven decks where Flash is also good. So I think I'm just going to go Narset over Chrome Host, Seed Shark, Fracture Identity, and Emrakul. I think Narset is a decent card. I don't mind picking it. This uh, this iteration of the Magic Online cube, they basically cut a lot of the cards I thought were good to cut. So I think that a lot of the fat did get trimmed. A lot of the, you know, last pick Sigarda type cards did did correctly get cut, or at least I'm I'm in favor of that. But then the cards that got added, I feel like were also mostly pretty bad. I do like taking shots, so. You know, and there's been some successes, in my opinion. Like, like I think Doomsday is a cool addition. Doomsday Thassa's Oracle is pretty neat. But there's, like, some warrior stuff. There's, like, some tribal or, like, domain stuff that I'm not really convinced by. So, I don't know. You know, there's, there's there have been some changes, and I like some of them, and others not, not so much. So here we've got Mystical Tutor that can go get Flash. We've got Sail into the West. We have Spellseeker that can go get Flash. When you're going to get Flash, I think Mystical Tutor is better. You'd rather just turn on Mystical, turn two Flash. You don't really care about getting the value of a 1-1 creature and also not putting it on top. That is So Spellseeker is kind of like twice the value there. But also Mystical can get draw sevens, which I want with Narset. So I'm going to take Mystical. Sail into the West is nice. Maybe that'll, that'll wheel. It's not 0%. Oh, there's a Tali. It's also a fetch land, also a Ponder. Well, if I were to take a fetch, I'd take Mire. There's also Grief, but I'm not really in a position to do that. I think I'm going to take Atali. Atali Flash is good. This is what I'm looking for. Caracas Atali is kind of funny, too. That's a nice late ponder. Oh, there's an Echo of Eons. Yeah, I'm in for that because Echo of Eons is also nice because I'm looking for discard spells, maybe to, to discard this Atali. And Echo, I think, is a pretty strong draw seven. So this is a pretty nice little combo we start. And then this pack has Crucible. Not really in for that. Not in a Sahili space, but Life Death actually is pretty nice because I can get back Atali after flashing it into play. So I will take my Reanimator spell because, I mean, we took Caracas over Steam Vents. That, you know, that's whatever. But we're looking like Blue-Black Reanimator is definitely one of the places we can go here. Oh, there's Show and Tell. There's also Gruff Triplets. So if you flash in Gruff Triplets... You make two tokens that are copies of it, and then they're both six sixes. Yeah, that actually doesn't seem too bad. And then if you animate it, it's pretty good. All right, I'll take that over show and tell. I'll try this. Passing up on Uro as well. This pack has Eternal Witness, which I'm not really that interested in. Collective Brutality, which I think I am. There's also Tireless Tracker, which is good, and Emery, which is okay. But I think I'm kind of blue-black here. See, look, that's what I'm talking about. Dreams of Steel and Oil. Like, you could... Just not put this card in your cube, you know. <laughs> uh, it's a duress for only artifacts and creatures, though you do get to exile one from the graveyard. I think... Do I want a Dark Depths? I don't really want a Dark Depths. I might just take Fiery Islet. Who knows, maybe I'll splash red. Wow. It's a late Seed Shark, I'll take that. Yeah, Neshoba Brawler. Not convinced by that one yet. That one I could see doing something. I'm not a big fan of the... Uh, Sylvan Safekeeper either. We tried that one in Frog's Cube for a while and basically no one ever played it. Oh, interesting. Both Cryptic and Sail into the West Wield. I think I think I actually want Cryptic more. I would have taken Sail into the West the first time. Oh, wow, that's a late watery grave. What a score. 
Sorry, Snap and Oracle. Uh, Botanical Sanctum I'll take just in case. I think I'm more likely to want green than white in my deck. This I'm not right into. Yeah, I would have probably taken uh, the Sail into the West over Cryptic, but we've taken all blue cards plus like one black card or two black cards. So I like Cryptic and I like Mox Sapphire. Passing up on a Force of Will, gladly, in order to take Mox Sapphire here. And maybe we'll get back, eh, Thought Scour or something, who knows. Ooh, I do like Thoughtseize. Jace is also good, and so is Verdant, but Thoughtseize is just a busted card, so it's maybe the best black card. Take that over Jace, Grim, Verdant, I think, pretty easily. Speaking of Jace, so there's Jace the Mind Sculptor here, which this looks like a pretty solid Jace deck. Just blue-black, kind of just some disruption, some, some combo elements. There's also a Lotus Petal, a Talisman, not really a Luris deck. Don't have the mana for upheaval. Yeah, yeah, all right. I mean, Jace the Mind Sculptor's gotten worse, but doesn't mean you shouldn't play it. Oh, so here there's Triplicate Titan and Animate Dead. And I think I'm going to take Animate Dead. Animate Dead is so good. It's by far the best Animate spell after Reanimate. <laughs> so, second best Animate spell, though it is close. And there's definitely games where you'd even rather have Animate. There's also Palace Jailer, but I'm not that into that. Let's see, one, two, three, four. Totally believable that Triplicate Titan could come back. So right now, I've got two creatures to animate. I could use more. Oh, there's Doomsday. I don't think we're a Doomsday deck, though. There's a Brazen Borrower. There's a Lelia, which I have a slight inroad in with Fiery Islet, but I don't even really like Lelia and Reanimator decks. You just exile cards you can't cast all the time. I might just take Brazen Borrower. I don't really care for Putrident very much. Soul of Windgrace is another card I don't think does a whole lot. Um... Uh... So here there's True Name, there's Cataxian Probe, and there's Sheldock. I'm going to take Sheldock. I love Sheldocks. First of all, I love it to begin with. But I also really love it in decks that have like Atalis and Gruff Triplets to hit or Echoes. And like a lot of good cards to hit. And this deck's going to go through its cards pretty quickly. So Sheldock is such a good bonus. I think it's better than True Name here because this deck's also not going to attack the opponent a bunch of times. It's looking to kind of end the game on a bigger note. Mm, Corpse Dance is also pretty good with... Itali, it's not that good with Gruff Triplets, because it doesn't die. There's also Fire Ice, which is just a great card in general. I don't care about Nurturing Peatland or Bring to Light. I didn't take the show until, so Portal to Phyrexia is not looking that good for me. I've already got two animates. I kind of think I just want Fire Ice instead of Corpse Dance. Oh, I will take Sunken Ruins, though. That's a nice way to cast Cryptic Command. And there's also Faithless Looting, but I'd rather just stick to Blue Black if I can. And I already have... Collective Brutality and Flash both put my creatures into the graveyard. On the other hand, though, though to, to go the other direction, Faithless Looting does help a lot with Echo of Eons. No, I'm, I'm, I have to take Looting, actually. It's a little painful, but especially I just a Fire Eyes, too. A little red mana won't hurt. Tentacle Sanctum is going to be in the Shadow Realm for now. And I've got one Water Grave and one Fiery Islet, so I could still use a little more fixing, but I bet we can get there. All right, so here we have Coveted Jewel, but we're not really a Coveted Jewel deck. That's just way too much mana. Yawgmoth's Will also is not really... It's just a mana issue for all these. I might just take Valky, but I really don't like that card that much. Sky Sovereign, I don't know. All these seem pretty bad. Let's just take Yawg. Well, maybe I'll end up there. I guess I could take Valky in case the Bring to Light wheels, but I don't... Really want to put Bring to Light in my deck either, so <laughs> I think I'll just pass on both. Wow, that's still a Parallax Wave here, huh? Uh, am I going to play Dig Through Time? Probably not. Let's just... Well, this actually couldn't be... Wouldn't it be the craziest Dig Through Time deck? I don't think Soul God Lantern's like a big miss. Oh, Through the Breach is actually a really nice pickup. Okay, I would definitely be interested in, in Breaching. All right, well, I'm glad I took Faithless Looting because Through the Breach also really makes me want to play... Red, because Breach on any of these is pretty good. Breach on triplets, you attack for three, but then you just, you're just you left with two six sixes. That's pretty good. Also, if you do it end of turn... Oh, it's kind of interesting. You could actually do it on their second main phase and then attack them for 12 on your turn. Oh, and Triplicate Titan came back. Yeah, this is going great. Triplicate Titan works with Flash and Breach very nicely. I think now I take the Putrid Imp. I don't think we're playing Doomsday. Um, I don't 
don't really like either of these that much. I guess I'm a little more likely to want Titan. Okay. And then last pick, Tamiya, sure. All right, well, this was a really good pack. We got a Mox. We got another good animate target for free. Got an animate dead, a thought seize, a looting. This looks good. Oh, and there's an Entomb. That's potentially the best card I could have opened that isn't like a Time Walker and Ancestral. Entomb also gets Echo V on, so it's even like a draw seven. It can set up Animate Dead or Life Death, but it can also just set up Echo V on. So I'm going to take Entomb here over Tinker, Deep Cavern Bat, Duress, Frantic Search. These are some good cards. Kappa Cannoneer. There's a lot of good cards in this pack. There's also a Najila. And this pack has... Good ones too. There's Lion's Eye Diamond and Wheel of Fortune. So I do love Lion's Eye a lot with Echo, but Wheel of Fortune as a second wheel to go with Narset and Wheel's good in Reanimator anyway. Seems like the pick. Also a Scalding Tarn here. Maybe uh, maybe the Lion's Eye will come back. Oh, Archon of Cruelty. Yeah, I'm not passing that one up. That one's the best to, to breach or animate. It's not the best to flash. It's just an Edict, Gain 3, they discard, you draw. I mean, that's still kind of nice, but Flash plus Archon can put it in the graveyard for your, your combo stuff. And then there's Gristlebrand versus Malcolm. Hmm, kind of in the middle on Malcolm here. Let's see. I think Gristlebrand is probably not as necessary. I have four targets and uh, a Breach, an Animate Flash, and it doesn't work with Flash either. So, yeah, I'll take Malcolm. Maybe Gristlebrand will come back, and if it doesn't, it doesn't. All right, and here... This is a tough one. There's Snapcaster, which is good with like Thought Seize. It's decent with like Life Death. Not really great with Entomb or Flash that often. There's Miscalculation, which is just a good disruptive card. But I think I might take Prismatic Vista. I need, I need a little bit more in terms of mana fixing and Vista will go a long way. Oh wow, this pack has Time Spiral and Shallow Grave and I like them both, but we're now in Shallow Grave territory. I feel like a low curve reanimate style deck is more what we're looking for. Chrome Host Seed Shark can probably go. Currently this is playing 15 land plus a mox, so I would really want to cut like one more card. It could be dig through time though. I'm kind of liking dig with I've got a fetch land, I've got looting, I've got wheel of fortune. I might cut brazen borrower. It's possible that that, that is the weakest card here. Here we've got a Tar Pit and a Liliana. I feel like I'm doing pretty good on discarding, and, and again, just taking a land is going to be really valuable for me. Oh, Woodfall Primus. That's actually great with Flash and Breach. It's not so good with, uh, sh with a Shallow Grave, but yeah, I'll take that. Not really competing with a whole lot there anyways. Okay. I mean, this, this has ended up going very nicely. Oh, Spire Bluff came back, and so did Duress, and so did Torsten. So... I guess at that point I could just cut the Gruff Triplets. Torsten, if you flash this into play, you get all the creatures and lands out of your top seven plus seven one ones, which is really sick. Yeah, I think I'll just maximize flash here. It just feels like between flash and the animates, like this deck's looking pretty fast. Honestly, I might cut Cryptic Command at this point. Maybe keep Dig and Jace as my slightly more expensive spells. It just reanimator seems very open. If I could get one more reanimate, then we'd really be talking. All right, here. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm not playing any of these cards, I don't think. You don't, don't see that. Oh, Trumpet and Carnosaur. D that one I might actually run. Late Noble, too. Because this discards itself, which is pretty nice. And it's a burn spell. <laughs> Gristlebrand came back. Sure, yeah. I'll take the Gristlebrand. And maybe I take the Dig Through Time out at this point. I'm just playing all cheap. Wow, Snapcaster came back? Okay. I'm not sure why that happened, but I will take it. Honestly, I might cut Fire Ice too. <laughs> I could uh, get Odra Kaslam in. Yeah, sure, why not? I, I'm not going to play that card, but I guess no one was playing green. Okay, so I have kind of a lot <laughs> of reanimate targets. This deck could actually use a Bizarre Baghdad. So right now... I mean, this is 25. Uh, maybe I can't afford the, the Carnosaur. Oh, wow, these go all the way over to Triplicate Titan here. Let's put these all 
all here. So we have for Flash everything that we could ever want. How many discard outlets do we have? We have Putrid Imp, Malcolm, Looting, Thoughtseize, Entomb, and of course Mystical, and Collective Brutality. That's kind of a lot, and Flash kind of counts too. Maybe I just take the Putrid Imp out because that card is really bad. And then maybe I take Trumpet and Carnosaur out, and I'll side it in if I really want to bolt. I already took Fire Ice out too, right? Oh no, Fire Ice is still here. Is maybe oh, Fire Ice is so good though. So mana wise, we've got a blue red land, a blue black land, a three color land. Caracas is actually worse. It's a colorless land, and another blue black land. So yeah, I mean I'm gonna play 17 lands. All right, I, I kind of like just jamming on the creatures and just having a lot of uh, a lot of outs to animate here. And I think Snapcaster is gonna be better than. Putrid Imp, it feels like we've got enough discard outlets. All right, so that's, this is blue, this is black. These are colorless. So how many red sources do we need here? Probably like three more. No plains, no forests. So if I go three, four, four, mm, this is one too many. Well, let's see, if I go four islands, that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten blue, four swamps. That's seven black, so I definitely can go down. I guess I only need red for three different cards. And this is, you know what? I might not be able to play this Caracas. As much as I like Caracas, it's not like I have specific combos with it besides, I guess, saving Malcolm. It kind of feels like nine blue is fine and eight black is fine, but that leaves me at 41, which means Caracas is getting out. All right, let's see how this does. I think this deck's really good. All right, time for round one. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll mulligan that hand. This hand looks pretty good. I will keep, and what am I going to put back? I'm going to put back a land. I guess it's actually Creeping Tar Pit, because I'm going to go turn one Sheldock, turn two Malcolm, and go from there. All right, my opponent's on Misty Rainforest. Maybe some sort of green one drop here. Uh oh Kind of. It's a Zagoth Triumph. If I draw an animate spell, I could jam turn one looting, but I feel like this is going to be better. Let's go Sheldock into Malcolm, and then I can turn three looting plus do something else. All right, let's put Woodfall Primus under the Sheldock Isle. I like that. I don't mind that at all. And then hopefully they don't come out the, the gates blazing here, but it doesn't look like they are. Obviously, they go land Mox Oko or something, and I would be incorrect. But if they just play like a green mana dork here, there's a pretty good chance. Oh, nothing. Okay, let's just go Mountain Go. There's a pretty good chance that we can have uh, an animate next turn. All we have to do is draw into an animator of Flash. Oh, okay, they have Vamp. So next turn, they're going to do something pretty good, I would assume. Let's find out. So they vamped, drop. Also, the one cool thing about Malcolm is having flash, it does make it look like I have counters up. Oh, channel. That I don't like to see. All right. Well, let's hope this isn't Emrakul. I can beat some of the things that channel leads to. I cannot beat Emrakul. Ulumog would be hard as well. Ulumog's possible because... I assume my Sheldock is going to get Ulamogged, if that's the case, and then I go Malcolm, try to find Flash, and Flash and Archon to make them sacrifice it. Maybe they're casting a Zenith or something here, though? Hmm. This is too much life. This looks like an Emrakul to me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, all right. If they had paid one more life, I could try to kill them with Malcolm. I don't mind showing them the Malcolm here. I don't really have outs here, but I can kind of pretend I do. I will side in Caracas though. Caracas against uh, em Channel Emrakul is kind of nice. So I'm gonna tap blue, blue, or blue colorless. Let these get annihilated. And then Cast Malcolm here. 
I'm going to take 15. The sad part is I know my mox is on the bottom, so I can't even draw mox plus, uh, <laughs> plus flash or something. But who knows? Thieving Skydiver. All right. Oh, so close. Um, let's see. Let's put in Caracas here and take out... I guess I could take out Fire Ice. All right, let's try this. I think my mana is such that I'd rather just have an extra land, basically. Though I've had two <laughs> six land openers and... <laughs> And then this, okay. I, I'm gonna mulligan this hand. This hand is also not capable. <laughs> this has been impressive. So three out of the four hands I've drawn so far have had six lands, though this one I guess kind of has seven. Uh, yeah, I will keep this, put two cards on the bottom, a Snapcaster and, oh, this is tough. I think it has to be Archon. I could also put, no, I'm gonna put Mountain. You know why? My Malcolm is going to find me into a third land, and it really don't want a mountain. I would rather have a swamp by so much. So, Plus, having Archon in hand when I wheel is just going to make me have so many more outs once the wheel hits. Obviously, if they just turn to Emrakul me, then, they, then that's the way it's going to go. But Okay. And let's just draw. This is so brutal. I can't. I can't. I can't run scared. If if they have turn two Emrakul, they have turn two Emrakul. I can't play Caracas and not play Malcolm here. I guess I should have led with Fiery Island on turn one. That's generally not the case, though. I just have to hope that they're gonna vamp. All right, they're not they're not turn two channeling me at least. Misery's Shadow. Oh, I, the thing is, part of the reason I think this card is just not that good is that it doesn't stop you from discarding so like if i wheel here the archon still goes to my graveyard i am gonna want to wheel but I, i'm just gonna draw with this first because if i draw an animate then then i can just cast that instead or a flash or something chase the mind sculptor i'm gonna discard archon I think I'm just going to go Caracas Wheel here. I don't think I want to wait a turn, do nothing, and then play Jace next turn. I'm fine just wheeling. They discarded Rafelos, Palantir, Vamp. All right. And there's not much I can draw. So again, if they if they go ahead and uh, Emrakul me, then I die. If not, then this hand looks pretty good. The Misery Shadow is stopping the Flash. That That much is true. What am I hoping to hit here? I guess I'm first of all I'm hoping they don't they don't channel Emrakul me. Past that, an animate spell would be the best because if I could find a way to animate that Archon, then animate the Archon and then maybe cast Flash or something, that would be sick. I did wheel away their Vamp at least. Okay, Abyssin's Pilgrim. Kill my Malcolm probably. Next turn, I mean, I could put in a Torsten. I kind of want to throw the Breach at some point here. No, Grist, okay. Oh wow, if their play is basically a four mana, two card Monty way to kill my, my Malcolm. I guess I'm not that, not that worried about it. Okay, and that gets exiled. And I get hit for two down to 16, and they're down to four cards in hand. Okay. And I need to just find one of my numerous animates. I have three animates. Let's let's see if we can if we can get one of those. No, but that actually also works. Let's go swamp, collective brutality, get their hand, give a creature minus two, minus two. And they lose two life, I think is actually fine. Boom, boom, boom. And discard Echo Vions and Triplicate Titan, because I think I'm going to Torsten here. 
And let's see what's in their grip. Atroxa, Sylvan Library, Skydiver, Basaju. Okay. And I don't think it really makes sense to do any to cast Flash now. They don't have any counters in hand, so this looks fine to me. End of turn, I'm going to get to put in Torsten, which will hopefully find me something to through the breach while also putting seven one ones into play. All right, they build the Nasika's Chariot. So yeah, they're like Sultai, Splash, Atroxa, Channel Emrakul sort of deal. Sylvan. Okay, not too bad. Pass. All right, let's cast Flash, put Torsten into play. We're not going to pay. We're going to get five land. Okay, well... Not ideal, but you know, we get seven one ones and and I hit a thought seize. So I have Echo of Eons here, but I don't even think it's that great to cast it. I don't know. Let's see. Attack them, attack them, attack them, attack them, attack grist, attack grist, attack grist, yeah, that looks right. Because I could just play Creeping Tar Pit, Thought Seize the Atroxa. I guess that Sylvan is going to... So you're taking three this turn, you're at 12. I know my bottom two cards. That doesn't matter too much. All right. I could Thought Seize you, play Tar Pit, pass. I could also Echo of Yon's. I don't really like Echo of Yonzing. Let's just go Thought Seize. Take the Atroxa. Play Tar Pit and pass the turn. Honestly, I might sack Fiery Islet, because if I draw like Gristlebrand, it would be pretty nice. Or Atali, either one of those would be awesome to breach. And six tokens and you're at 12. You have Sylvan, but paying four life to Sylvan is a pretty big cost when you're facing down six one ones. I don't know, it just feels like casting Echo of Eons when there's a potential to get Channel Emrakul, which I guess is getting less likely as my tokens attack also, but had I done it this turn, they would still have enough mana to Channel Emrakul attack me for lethal. I just don't see a big reason to to do that. And now, actually, I don't think Channel Emrakul works because you have to pay four life to get one of them. You go to eight, cast Channel. Yeah, that's not enough. All right. So you got a Bayou and... Like a Maelstrom Pulse, maybe? <laughs> oh, Garrick Wild Speaker, okay. You're gonna make a token and then make, then play a Skydiver. Well, not, not leaving Basaju up for a Creeping Tar Pit could be, could be a risk. All right, I think I'm gonna crack Fiery Islet here, because either way I'll be able to attack with Tar Pit next turn, and drawing and I think I'm just not going to Echo Vions and drawing a big creature for Breach will uh, end the game nicely. Nice, a land. Nice, nice, another one. <laughs> Top notch stuff. Uh, this puts my opponent down to one here. Yeah, I think that's probably fine. I just ignore the Garrick. Uh, attack you. And I think I'll play the Mox, because the Skydiver's already been played. Next turn, Basaju can kill the Creeping Tar Pit, but I don't think that's going to be a huge concern. You've got other things to worry about. Okay, take seven. Skydiver dies. Play a Mox, pass the turn. Even have Caracas up just in case. And you get to Sylvan and see two new cards at least, because you did pay four life mostly just to see a new card. You're facing down four one ones, you've got two beasts. And all right, go into game three here. Mm. Trumpeting Carnosaur, Cryptic, no, no. I think I like where I'm at. All right, on the draw. I think I'm going to keep this hand. It's not the best hand in the world, but 
any discard outlet and echoes on. I could also thought seize myself, but I don't love the idea of that. What I kind of want to just draw is like a Malcolm. I also just like Thoughtseize against an opponent who has Channel Emrakul, though they didn't lead with a very a hand very conducive to Channel Emrakul. Let's see. Okay, many Malcolms. That's a Malcolm. I'm going to go Swamp Mox. If they counter the Mox, Thoughtseize them. If they don't, I'm just going to pass. I don't need to Thoughtseize them right now. I could, but I think playing Malcolm's better, and I fear they have Vamp Tutor. And if they have vamp, then thought seizing the then thought seizing is pretty bad. If they if they thieving skydiver me, it will be pretty annoying because that steals my mox and if and blocks my Malcolm. <laughs> yeah, that would be brutal. But I kind of have to play the mox if I want to play Malcolm on turn one, which I think I do. Okay, let's hope that that is not what's going on here. Unfortunately, I think it is. I'm getting bad vibes. Yeah. Ugh, gross. Yeah. All right. Play Malcolm. Hmm. When the vibes are atrocious. Let's just draw for the turn and hope we find something decent. Wow, drawing Malcolm was like the worst thing that could have happened to me. I apparently called for something that was actually not great. Faithless looting would be nice. All right, I'm going to Thought Seize you. I just don't think I can afford to Thought Seize myself into Echo. Oh, they did have the vamp. What could they vamp for? I don't know. I'm just going to take the Grist. I just feel like I can't... Uh, I can't just take vamp. I'll let them vamp for something if they want to vamp. They don't even have an upkeep stop. They did not give themselves the option of vamping on upkeep. What, did they draw that planes? No, they drew Misery's Shadow. Okay. Let's see. Well, they're clearly not going to attack here. Let's see if I can draw something awesome. Nope. Guess I'll play Prismatic Vista. Pass the turn. They're gonna. They're not vamping. Huh. That's pretty odd because if they just have any good threat, now is a good, great time to just vamp for it. Oh, they're attacking with the skydiver. Okay, I really like that. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it. If I get to attack back and do something here, then that could be pretty good. They're not pumping their Misery Shadow. So are they just not vamping because they just know they're going to draw something good every turn? <laughs> Is that what's going on? I mean, they attacked with the, the Skydiver letting me hit them with Malcolm. That is a little strange. Okay, draw. Snapcaster Mage. That's not ideal. Let's attack with this. And if this doesn't work, then that's not great. But... I'm really confused as to why that Thieving Skydiver attacked. Uh, I mean, actually, I'm going to discard Echo of Eons. I think I have to just cast Echo of Eons. I don't love it. I really don't. But let's just do that. I'm going to play my Swamp first. I know that I could maybe play Caracas, but I just don't see that that, being, that is the case. Let's just play this. Maybe we'll hit Thoughtseize. No, I hit, <laughs> hit five lands at Flash and Gristlebrand. Things, the things this match not exactly going my way, I wouldn't say. Uh, Hole Breacher. Dear Lord, okay. I mean, they can just kill me now with Misery Shadow. That said, I have a Swamp Up. I could have Fatal Push, so it's not like crazy of them or, or to, to not go for it. But, mm-hmm. Time warp. All right, all right. Unfortunate. Got taken down. That game three was a little painful. And then we got Channel Emerald game one. But I, I have faith. We can go 2 1 with this. All right, I would like to play first. 
I mean, I guess I do actually keep this. This is a turn three Jace with Sheldock on the play. I think that's good enough. Uh, yeah, let's put a wheel under Sheldock and I think keep Mox in hand. It's always a balance between exposing Mox to like Embress, Shield Breaker, Reclamation, Sage, you know, any any artifact removal versus Inquisition, Thought Seize. Well, against Blue Red, you definitely want to keep it in hand. All right, let's see. This deck is a, this deck for a deck that could turn one flash and turn two reanimate. This deck is really not doing a lot to to sell me on it being good. I do think this deck is good, but it is not demonstrating that. I will say that. All right, let's draw land mox. I mean, this probably works. They'd have to have spell pierce or one of the two forces. And I'm just gonna brainstorm. All right, action. Let's do it. Mm. Let's put back Island and collect Brutality. Because Brutality is the only one I don't really care about, or I don't really want discarded. Not that they have a discard. They didn't activate top end of turn. Not that I'm complaining. The fewer times my opponents activate top, the better. What is this? Ballista for two. Oh, that does not kill my Jace. All right, so now let's go all the modes. Mm-hmm. Boom, boom, discard, Gristlebrand, Echo of Eons. Minus two, minus two, and then I might uh, flashback Echo here. It kind of depend a little on what's in their hand. Nug the Jace again, because I know my top card's a land, so I'm not like that excited about it. Let's see what they've got. Lightning Bolt, Brainstorm, Thoughts. They didn't Lightning Bolt my Jace? Mm hmm. I see. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I'll take Lightning Bolt. Their hand is kind of bad. Wait, they shot my Jace once. Cool. Um, their hand's a bunch of cantrips. Let's just, let's just Echo, actually. It's fine. Echo. And I know they have multiple ways to kill Jace. Since I'm about to have seven new cards in hand, let's just go plus two on you. So I guess actually I kind of want a plus two on me. No, I can plus two on you. Maybe it's something really good. I think for me, I'm just gonna mystical for entomb on upkeep. Upkeep, mystical, entomb, animate. Entomb Gristlebrand, probably. Animate it. Basalt Monolith. You can keep Basalt Monolith. I think that that... I would, I would not want them to keep Basalt Monolith if I, Monolith if I knew they had Kinan, Zerda, or Telerian Academy. But otherwise, it's just not that good of a card. You're spending three mana to get three mana. There's no real advantage there. Okay, they didn't play an Academy. They just immediately played a land. Tinker. Okay. What are we tinkering for? It's not much that kills Jace. Battle Ball. Okay. Well, hopefully, opponent doesn't also have Time Walk. Mm, let's upkeep Mystical. Let's get in Tomb. Draw. Oh, well, let's actually brainstorm first. Do I want to brainstorm first? I've got a mere Battle Sphere that I might want to bounce, actually. So let's in Tomb. It's in Tomb, Gristlebrand, I think. Um, play Vista. Go to 20. Swamp. Animate Dead the Gristlebrand. And hopefully they don't have a counterspell. Seems reasonably likely they could. Okay, they did not. And now, let's pay 7 life to draw 7 cards. Hopefully get something I can flash in. Oh, so like now here's what I can do. So I can flash in Atali and guaranteed to play one of the other ones, which I kind of like. They, they are going to get to top. Hmm. They are going to get to top and make it so whatever I hit with Atali is not that good. But I get an Archon into play. Alternately, I could flash in Primus to kill two lands. Eh, 
Yeah, that actually kind of seems better. Let's just, because then I can also bounce the battle sphere. So let's put in Woodfall Primus. Not pay, destroy the volcanic. Persist. Destroy the mountain. And then they get to top if they want. I'm pretty I'm pretty well insulated against oh ancestral recall nice this is one of the spots where ancestral recall looks a lot worse than a mox certainly than a time walk anything like that bounce the battle sphere wow they can't even kill Jace now and then I pass I still have a gristle brand in play too by the way <laughs> in case I care about uh doing anything with that and let's discard a swamp and a mountain yeah they get to top I mean, look, the Ancestral, they have a lot of cards in hand, but it's going to be up to them to... How can they convert those cards in hand into, like, something that, that's on the board? Because currently, they don't have anything on the board, or at least not much compared to me. And uh, I have a Planeswalker, a Gristlebrand, and a Woodfall Primus. And next turn, I might just hard cast a Tali. I just brainstorm with Jace, put Archon on top, and then potentially slam a Tali. Obviously, there are combos they can kill me from here if they... Went Underworld Breach, LED brain, brain Freeze, I would just die. But they would need uh, something along that line. Because there's not that much in the way of Sweepers and Red Blue. I guess Show and Tell put in Portal. Yeah, that, that actually would be pretty problematic. I would... What I would need to do is find a, an Animate for Woodfall Primus to kill the Portal. Grim Monolith. So now they could cast Sneak Attack, but they're a bit far away from that. All right, let's see if I can... Is there any way I can kill them this turn currently? <clears throat> oh, they're Bolting Jace. Okay. Well, that makes that not happen. Oh, there's Life Death. Let's Collective Brutality them. Again, doing all the modes. Boom, boom, boom. Discard a Swamp and an Archon. And their hand, we'll find out. This will give me a lot of information as to like what I want to do. Yeah, they do have Through the Breach, which I'm taking, and their hand is now Battle Ball and all lands. Okay. Let's attack here. I don't think I need to do anything else first. And this will gain me a bunch of life, and then I'll cast death on Archon here. Seems like the play. Leaving up Sheldock. All right. We got there, we got there. So playing against hmm, a Tinker deck, I think Borrower for Portal sounds like it's probably better than Fire Ice. Don't think I need Caracas from what I saw. All right, we'll try this. All right, I am on the draw here. Yeah, I will keep this hand. I need an animate and a black mana, but I have a looting to draw extra cards, a borrower as a bit of disruption, and then both Itum, Entomb and discarding a Tali. So I will have something to animate. In fact, I might just discard the Entomb to the looting. Oh, interesting. Uh, I don't need to shell dock right away. Let, let's just looting, because I already look, I know I'm looking for black mana. Through the breach, huh? Let's just discard a Tali and Tomb. Because I have something good to bring back if I need it, if I need to. And then by the time I'm to casting Through the Breach, this deck has so many creatures, there's a pretty good chance I'll find one. Mana Vault. So they have a lot of artifact fast mana that they do. All right, this would be a decent turn to draw a black source, though, depending on what they do here. Oh, are they just tinkering right away? Uh, okay. I mean, if this is just Battle Ball again, and I can mirror battle, or I can bounce it with Borrower. Oh, Blight's even better. I mean, obviously it's fine to just turn two Blight Steel and hope to not, you know, have, your opponent doesn't have an answer. But in this particular case, I do. All right, Island Petty Theft. Clearly, got to do that now. All right, they didn't have a force. The game can continue. Nice. And then next turn, 
I still don't need to play Sheldock. I'll probably just go Mountain, Flashback, Faithless Looting. Yeah, that's my plan. Mm. Okay, so who do I want to keep? I'm discarding Echo Vions for sure. I think I'll put Torsten in the graveyard. And then set up to Breach Archon. I, I like Breaching. Breaching Archon sounds pretty good. So they didn't play a land last turn. They just went top, go, and then are spinning at end of turn. So that's not bad. Presumably they're going to play one this turn. I am running into <laughs> not having a fifth untapped land because I'm going to go Swamp Thoughtseize next turn. But hopefully I draw a land by then. Yeah, I definitely have to Thoughtseize. This Shell Duck, okay, it's not, it's not getting me too bad. All right, let's go ahead and Thoughtseize you. And is Blightsteel, Spellseeker, Thran Dynamo Experimental Synthesizer? I guess I'll take Spellseeker. I don't I really know what's up with uh, the rest of their stuff. Sensei's Top Experimental Synthesizer is kind of cool. You like set it up so you know your top card's a land. Patchwork Automaton. Wow, we're getting a whole Neon Dynasty day here. All right. So this gets to be a 2-2. The synthesizer comes in. I would imagine exiles a land. Oh, it's a time warp. I mean, it might have been that the top didn't set it up nicely for that. All right, draw, land, through the breach. Through the breach once more. And now, opponent's hand is a blight steel and a dynamo. I'll still do Archon over Woodfall, I think. I think it's. Killing the patchwork is good. Killing the shell dock would be nice, but drawing, I really like drawing two cards because I'm looking for my next animate. I don't have that set up yet. All right, this does a bunch of damage. And now, one new card. It's a land. We're getting to shell dock pretty soon here. In fact, we're going to shell dock now. The other question is, opponent has no cards in hand. I really don't want to cast Echo of Eons. I guess I'll just Shell Dock. Yeah, I'll put Flash under the Shell Dock, and I'll pass the turn here. Awkward that I can't even cast the Borrower. So now they can Shell Dock end of turn. Let's see what it is. Hopefully it's nothing too devastating. Next turn I'll be able to Woodfall Primus. Oh, they didn't shell dock end of turn. If they don't shell dock on their turn, we actually run into a funny standoff where if they try to shell dock in response, I can shell dock flash and kill their thing. They're tapping their shell dock. Okay. Exile on the mountain, sure. They might have missed with shell dock. It's definitely possible. Okay. There's seven. Well, I guess I'm just going to do this now while they're tapped out. I don't think there's a better a reason to do otherwise, though I guess I could do this first. Boom, boom. I just do do all of the things because I don't care about my extra lands. And I take through. Huh, I even hit. All right, play Fiery Islet. I guess I will sack this to draw a card, because if I draw an animate, I think I'd rather, like a shallow grave, I would just win. All right. No. So let's cast Flash. Flash the Woodfall Primus. And destroy the Shell Dock. And then pass the turn. It comes back. I guess here I'm going to kill the Basalt Monolith because that's a lot of mana. Okay, well, we're never going to find out what was under that shell dock. <laughs> that is a mystery lost to us, and uh, we're one and one Let's get to round three. All right, if we can escape with a 2-1, I won't feel too bad about this. Let's see. Oh, here we go. This is the, this is the hand I was looking for, a turn two flash. Turn two flash Primus, even. That's great. And then I can maybe follow it up with a turn three Wheel of Fortune. Maybe an anime dead, depending on what happens. So here we're going to go Prismatic Vista Go, not crack it. 
Turn two mountain go, they're going to take their second turn and hopefully double Primus on their first two lands gives us enough time to, to win. I mean, that's obviously a, a fantastically good play. They mold to six even. So I think this might be a, this could be a fast game. Okay, turn one ignoble, sure. So they're going to have access to more mana. Oh, watery grave. I um, guess I can just play mountain though. Because I want to get Island with Prismatic Beast anyway. Because now that I've done a blue source, my my turn my my play this game is actually going to be awesome. I get to go turn two, flash, kill two of your lands, put leave a five five in play, then play Narset and then cast Wheel. So they're going to have not a whole lot at the end of uh, two turns from now. Forest attack with Ignoble. <laughs> that would be that would be pretty nice. Let's see, uh, let's see what they got, but there's some ways this goes wrong for them, for sure. Tap land attack with Ignoble Hierarch. Okay, there's a Taiga. If they don't attack, let me put an end of combat stop. Well, we'll see what they do. If they decide, if they go to their attack step, decide not to attack, I'm going to in combat kill both their lands so they can't play something... Main phase two, that's going to be my plan. We'll, we'll see what they've got. Presumably they got some kind of play here. All right. Courser of Crufix. Sure. Oh, revealing Crucible? Well, I mean, Crucible can get the lands back, but that's uh, going to be a little difficult. Let's go Woodfall Primus. Kill Taiga. Kill Forest. And then go Watery Grave, Pay the Life, Narset. And I'm just not going to crack the Narset. Or not going to use Narset because of the Wheel of Fortune. Pass. I don't really want my Narset getting attacked. Okay, they get to play a Mountain for free. That's something. If they don't have like a Fast Bond, then I'm not too worried. And if they didn't have Fast Bond last turn, so... Presumably their play is Mountain Go here, though. If they... Need to play a different land to have a different play up. Obviously, that's an option. Fable's their top card. Okay. I'm hoping they don't have a play this turn. And I'm probably going to play a tap Tar Pit before casting Wheel here. Tar Pit's a pretty good land to play. I don't mind not having a play this turn. Yeah. Okay. Wheel of Fortune. So their, their hand is actually going to be a Fable. <laughs> that's going to be the only card in their hand. Oh, that's it? You don't want to play more? What was I going to draw? Breach, Jace, Archon. Yeah, some good stuff. All right. Uh, playing against a green deck. Does that make me want Carnosaur? Yeah, no, I think I'm pretty good where I am. All right. And this hand, I think I'm going to keep... I don't think I'm going to discard Torsten on turn one. If this was like an Archon of Cruelty, I, I could see having a different attitude. And if I draw Mox Sapphire as my first draw, then I'm in to do it. But turn one, discard, turn two, land go, turn three, Torsten. Mm, doesn't seem strong enough to me, especially since turn three, Torsten doesn't even necessarily, like it doesn't put seven one ones into play because it just, I'd be animating it. Or I guess it'd be Shallow Grave, in which case I still don't get all the 1-1s. One -one. So I will keep the hand, because any discard outlet makes this hand good. Mox makes this hand good. Flash makes this hand crazy. Mm, Wheel of Fortune, interesting. Wheel of Fortune's also not actually that bad of a turn 3 play. Ren in 6 without any lands. Sure. All right, that doesn't bother me too much. Let's see. Land or Mox. Yeah, I'm just going to go land, go, and then probably, f depending on what I draw, Fiery Islet, Wheel of Fortune. Oh, definitely playing Fiery Islet now. Urborg makes this so you can tap this for black. It's a free roll. Okay, what do they got? Sylvan Library. Sure. This was not the most action-packed hand, I wouldn't say. Oh, there's a Tali. That actually makes me want to discard, especially since I have Shallow Grave now and I can Shallow Grave Vitali end of turn. So let's do this. Pass. 
They are going to get to Sylvan, which is kind of awkward with Itali, but I think that's okay. I think I'm going to go end of their turn, Shallow Grave Itali, get to play my two spells. Then on my turn, maybe I cast Wheel of Fortune. Maybe if one of the spells I cast is like an Entomb, I'll cast a, a Life Death. Obviously, I could also just hit like Archon or Gristlebrand off Itali, in which case, you know, that's just game. And... If they stack a bad card on top because of Sylvan, then so be it. All right, they get to Sylvan a bunch. They took four, so they left one card. Plus, if they leave a land, Atali just goes by the land anyway. Grist, okay. And they're going to mill their top card then. Oh, that would have been a good one to, to Atali. All right, well, but I had to do it end of turn because I need to... Or I would like to attack with Atali. All right, what I hit? Malcolm and a Birds of Paradise. All right, that's not the strongest, but, you know, what are you going to do? Um, I mean, I get to put Torsten into play. So let's go attack. Which Planeswalker? I think Atali is going to attack Grist, and Malcolm is going to attack... Sorry, Atali... No, Malcolm's going to attack Grist. Atali is going to attack Ren and Six, because... Renin 6 just kills my X1s, so I think just killing that is good. And you put Grist down to 2, it can't kill Malcolm unless uh, it uh, it minuses. I'm, and I'm, ju I'm just going to go Wheel instead of Torstening here, because I'm not going to get to discard off Malcolm. But they have a million cards in hand. It actually feels like Sheldock Wheel sounds like a pretty strong combination. Okay, Sheldock... Sure, I'll put Echo under that. That could be good. And then, or actually, oh no, I can't Death and Inferno Titan. Because that is too good. All right, Wheel. And I got their Dark Ritual and Crucible. Huh. Uh, I don't think I need to play a Mox. So next turn, I get to, wow, well, I get to do a lot. I'm at 20 still. I have a Shallow Grave. I could set up a Shallow Grave Archon turn next turn. Yeah, I guess it requires my birds to still be alive, but I think there's a pretty good chance of that. What I do is I go Collective Brutality, Discard Archon, Snapcaster Mage, Shallow Grave. And the Archon gets to Nug for 12, and they're at 12. So that is certainly a potential win backed up by Collective Brutality. So they milled Dark Depths to play with Grist. Hopefully they don't have like a fast bond type deal. I do need my bird to live, but I don't need Malcolm to live. So, and Malcolm I, I feel like is kind of a, a target. So it seems like there's a chance that maybe the, the bird escapes under the radar. But let's see, Fable of the Mirror Breaker? Oh, that is not gonna do it. And they don't have like a duress or something. All right, so let's let's just do that then. So let's go Mox. Collective Brutality. On all the modes. Boom, boom. Or give the Goblin Shaman minus two, minus two. You discard. So let's go black, blue. Discard Archon. Uh, discard Gristlebrand. Let's put Gristlebrand in the graveyard, then Archon into the graveyard. And this also means I can make sure they don't have a removal spell in response. Oh, they had Bitter Triumph, but they don't have the mana for that. And wow, their hand was just not that good. I guess I'll take the Molten Collapse. Play a land. Snapcaster Mage. And get Shallow Grave. I just need to make sure they couldn't... Shallow Grave would get disrupted by them killing something in response, but now it will not. And I'm going to attack for well more than lethal here. Because now I get to attack for another 11. Boom, boom. And they're at 7. All right. Well, we got our, like, kind of busted draws this this match, at least. Turn 2 flash. I mean, game 1, turn 2 flash, turn 3 narset, turn 4 wheels. Absurd. You won't lose very many draw uh, games at all to that with that. And then 
that game in a turn three, turn two, discard a Tali and then bring it back on their turn. Or turn three, discard a Tali, bring it back. And uh, that was pretty good, even though it didn't hit amazing cards. Then I wheeled in, into some good stuff. Yeah, I mean, this deck is great. I would always take this deck, like, you know, if I was like, all right, what do you, you know, would you take this deck in the top eight of a 64 player draft? And yes, I would. Because the combination of Entomb, Thoughtseize, Animate Dead, Shallow Grave alongside Archon, Itali is great already. Then you add in Mystical Tutor and Flash. Flash, which paired really well with Woodfall, really well with Torsten, pretty well with Triplicate Titan. Three, three, threes isn't amazing. Great with Itali, though obviously a bit of variance. And then okay with Archon as a way to get Archon on the graveyard plus some value. And as Gristlebrand, it's just a discard outlet. But I also had some draw sevens. I had a Mox Sapphire. Like, this was just an excellent deck. So a little disappointed to go 2-1, but yeah, that definitely happens. And uh, I liked how this deck played out. Hope you enjoyed this draft today. There will be another one tomorrow. So join me tomorrow as we draft some more cube. And uh, I appreciate it, you watching. Let me reanimate some things. Cast some Echoes of Eon. We'll be back tomorrow with another one. And I'll see you there. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel and you won't miss a single draft.